Hi everyone, welcome back again. Yesterday's video about which energy tariff to go for, uh, I thought the location worked quite well here in my garage. Sound was okay, lighting was okay with a uh, workshop light over here. It uh, seems okay, so I thought I'd do the stats video from here as well with the backdrop of the Give Energy battery, the Solar Edge inverter, and the, oops, other way around, Solis inverter as well that I have. So stats for September, what's been going on? Well, there's there's a couple of things in summary to talk about. And one is, well, I generated over 600 kilowatt hours of energy from the solar panels. And where the heck has it gone? Because it doesn't feel like I used very much. And that sense of, well, where did it go is something I'll explain in a moment. But also, uh, this month is my first month without an electric car. My Kona Electric disappeared, got sold um, end of August. So September, I've had zero charging on my Zappi. So I've had more energy available from the solar panels that I could have used for something else. So that makes for an interesting feeling to me as to what it's like having now um, a surplus of energy. But at the same time, the seasons are changing and it doesn't feel like I've got very much. The last few weeks has been really, really different here weather-wise. It's been so dark, so grey, so little solar. It has well, it's just taken over it. I can hardly remember what it was like in the first part of September, which had really good sunshine and lots of kilowatt hours. And of course, you then into the issue of, well, why couldn't have I saved up all the energy from the beginning of September and use it now at the end of September and into October? If only we could save it. If only we could store it in a massive one of these. That'd be really cool, wouldn't it? But the thing that's really surprised me this month in September is when I looked at some of the stats for export, and if I show them up here, it seems very, very coincidental that on a particular day, I seem to be exporting exactly what I'm generating from the uh, solar edge inverter. So last September, when I added that inverter and 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, it does seem that all of that energy I'm exporting to the grid on a daily basis. And if I look at the entire year, so all of 2020 and how much energy I've generated on that inverter, on that new solar array, it's way, way too close to what I'm actually exporting. In fact, I'm, expo I'm exporting more than I'm generating, which it just begs the question statistically, did I make the right decision? Was buying another solar array and another inverter adding more solar power, was that the right thing to do? Because if I had spent money and bought one of these instead, yeah, and fair enough, I think last year when I was buying this, it was, let's say, £3,500 to have the panels and the inverter installed, where for £3,500 you can probably get one of these now, but last year you couldn't. Last year, £3,500 wouldn't have got you much more than 25 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So it's not really a like-for-like -like comparison, but I, but I am feeling right now that did I do the right thing? Was buying the extra solar panels the right thing? Or should I have bought one of these? Because the battery supplements solar really, really well. And if I didn't have such an abundance of solar power, then the battery would help support the original array even better. So it would have maximized the use of it. The problem that I have with the batteries here is because I've got both solar arrays and I've got so much solar energy, I don't need the battery as much. If I took some of the solar away, I would need the battery more because I wouldn't be generating as much during the day. I'd be experiencing peaks more often. Um, it would just use the battery more. So I'd get better justification from it, better cost justification. And I know a lot of you watching this like to cost justify these things. So having lots and lots of solar and then adding a battery, depending on your usage case, of course, might result like I am exporting all of the energy and not maximizing the use of your battery. You've got this dilemma. Is it better? Will you save more money by adding more solar panels, which are cheaper than you would if you had a battery? So that, I guess, depends on what your overnight needs are. If, like me, you're at home during the day, a lot of the time I'm retired. Um, I am at home quite a lot, so I can utilize the power from the solar panels during the day in any way that I choose. If I was working every day, then the overnight usage, uh, my cooking, my uh, washing, my everything would be more in the evening and therefore a battery probably makes more sense. So you can start to see that having more power in your solar panels is probably more effective because it's more cost effective. They're cheaper to get more kilowatt hours. But the question is, can you use those kilowatt hours? And that's the calculation that you have to do. Solar panels are cheaper per kilowatt hour. 
than a solar battery, in my opinion. But it's can you use it? And you need to do a calculation about how usable solar power is during the day versus how usable the solar power is at night if it's stored in a battery. And based on that usability, then one would make sense over the other. So I still feel crazily that I've made the right decision buying extra solar power to cater for my future, knowing that I'd have a battery as well at some point, even though I'm annoyingly exporting at least the amount of all those extra solar panels because I don't have the energy demands during the summer to use up all of that energy. I really do need to sell it. And that's a, a great thought about the future, thinking about it, that I have an excess of energy. And is that a bad thing? I don't think so. Having more energy is brilliant. It's what to do with it. So just because I can't do anything with it now doesn't mean I won't be able to in the future. So when we eventually have two electric cars here, I can but hope one day, can't I? Or when I have the ability to sell back energy to the grid and that justifies more than um, my fit payments that I get from my, where is it? Meter here on the Solus inverter. Then once that equation works and I can then export energy and get paid for it, then it will make more financial sense. So I, I still think working from generate as much power as you can afford before you get a storage battery. But of course, things change. People's jobs change. Um, your circumstances change. Yeah, we do move house sometimes as well. So we have to think about that. But these systems aren't here for one year, for five years. These systems are here for 10, 20, 30 years. So it is worth thinking and planning ahead for your future. You're, you're providing an infrastructure that's going to help you into the future and help the environment, of course, because every kilowatt hour that you generate is either helping you or helping somebody else be greener because it is completely green, sustainable, renewable energy. And uh, that is what you want. So it's a good, positive thing. So enough about the discussion on solar panels and battery and which should come first. Let's get down to the stats. What did I generate and where did it go? So starting off with the first array, the 3.9 kilowatt array via our Solus inverter, that generated 415.8 kilowatt hours. The worst day generated only 1.3 kilowatt hours on the 27th. The best day was the 19th and that was 22 and a half kilowatt hours. The second array, the Solar Edge array with 2.4 kilowatts, generated 239 kilowatt hours. So that's in total 655 kilowatt hours for the month, slightly less than last month. So we generated 655 kilowatt hours, imported 16 and exported 358. Hot water heating via the My Energy Eddy device, that was 103 kilowatt hours. No charging on the My Energy Zappy device because I haven't got an electric car at the moment. I sold it last month. And then 156 kilowatt hours for house consumption. House consumption seems quite low this month as well, at only 156, almost 100 kilowatt hours less than last month. What I can note though is that um, we're in that in-between period, aren't we? It's not hot enough to have air conditioning, it's not cold enough to have portable heaters on, and I haven't got an electric car at the moment, so I haven't been cleaning it. So there's been no vacuuming of the car and no pressure washing either. If I then add in the 42 kilowatt hours that we've charged into the storage battery, that was the old pure drive battery, that leaves us out just by four kilowatt hours, rounding and discrepancies between the numbers. So looking at these numbers, what did I do with all that energy we generated? Well, pretty much I exported most of it. I didn't really use very much of it at all. And that's what feels really odd because the end of September, there was so little energy, it didn't feel like we had anywhere near as much as the 655 kilowatt hours. As always, thanks for watching everyone. I hope there was something in there that was of interest to you. Please click like on the video, unless of course you dislike the video, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. More videos to come about solar, batteries, electric cars, test drives, all that sort of thing. When I do get my next electric car, lots of videos on that, that's for certain. Anyway, take care for now, and see you again soon. Bye for now.